You thought last week's chapters were stressful? Well, this week's are less, which is nice. Dragon Steel is next week! I really gotta get my cosplays ready. Thank you to Doug, Matt, Data Gremlin, Craig, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithy Carone, Gallant Aegis, the son of James, Lex Herntelap, and 42. And of course, Dragon Woodshop for sponsoring this video. If you want cool stuff, they got cool stuff. Chapter 33. Lyft sees a gold vision of herself if she had stayed in Rall Elarim. If her mother hadn't died? It's going to be difficult to wait until the back half of Stormlight to get her backstory. She mentions her great uncle, who swears by the name of the god he hates. Ishik the Pure Laker? Or at least someone from the Pure Lake. The reason Lyft doesn't want to grow up is she wants to be recognized by her mom when she returns. Which raises some questions. But Lyft isn't the only one hiding in the air vents. Gavinor followed her in as well as a strange purplish Kremling, definitely a sleepless Hordling. The perpendicularity collapses, pulling them all toward it. Wit manages to save two out of three. Gavinor is gone. Quick theory, time goes funky in the spiritual realm, right? Rip Van Winkling is a real danger. So what if when Gavinor finally makes it out, he's grown up? but still seething about his father's murder, making him the perfect champion for Odium. Just saying. Wit peeks into Shadesmar, but only sees the slain Lika. No sign of any Colin, including Shallan and Renarin. If Dalinar doesn't make it back in eight days, Odium is free. And that's bad. Hopefully his bondsmithed watch keeps working. To prevent tower-wide panic, it looks like Wit's going on Dalinar duty. Yeah, let's see how well he pulls this off. Over to Kaladin, who sucks at cooking. Disasters are happening on both ends of the continent, apparently. Zeth feels he deserves his torment, and so to heal it would be immoral. It's not immoral to stop hurting. Cal experiences the frustration of every band kid trying to learn an instrument. And like every band kid, this causes him to spiral into depression. Syl helps him out by pointing out the positive in his past. It didn't banish the darkness, but active thoughts as counters to it really did help. Turns out the stew wasn't too bad after all. Things are only bad or good by comparison. Zeth opens up a little, and they decide to visit the San Volano homestead in the morning. Kaladin picks up the flute again, has a convo with the wind about odium changing and preserving a remnant of honor, then unexpectedly meets Ishar. Lopin! He's checking out the perpendicularity explosion on the Shadesmar side of Eurythiru. No person mush to be found. Interesting that the dead body didn't get pulled in. The imploding perpendicularity must have had a cognitive or spiritual pull, and not a physical one. The Lopin's optimism and awareness of what he can and can't control is impressive. He's got that serenity prayer down pat. Sounds like Lyft is being fake Vani, shrugging and eating Chowta. Are you even trying, girl? Back to Cal and Ishar. When Dalinar confronted him at the end of the last book, he awoke again to his heraldic nature. But he's still nuts. Because he founded the Oath Pact, Ishar is able to siphon off some of the other heralds crazy, except Tong, becoming the conflux of all darkness and sorrow. He didn't foresee Kaladin, but he claimed Zeth as a servant. Cal has to help Zeth get his work done before they'll talk again. And that's the end of day two! Less explosive than I was expecting, even considering the actual explosion. We'll see what the interludes have in store for us next week, right before Dragon Steel Nexus! If you're going to the con, be sure to check out the Dragon Woodshop booth for all your nerdy display needs. I mean, check out mine too, I'm gonna have good stuff. And if you don't have room in your suitcase, just order online and get free shipping on any US order over $75. Plus exclusive discounts during Dragon Discount Days, December 4th through 8th. Plus an additional 5% off for my viewers who use the coupon code SHAFO. And if you show your receipt at the booth, any order over $45 qualifies you for even more prizes. So get your bookshelf together and go shop and find out.